Hello and welcome to the second video in the Ardu Pilot or Ardu Plane in this case on an Omnibus flight controller. Now for those of you that haven't come across Ardu Pilot before, I'll put a link here to a video where I explain the differences between the Ardu Pilot family of software and things like iNav and Vector and some other fixed wing flight controllers. But I'm going to put this into a little wing and kind of go through the setup of this from beginning to end. And hopefully it'll help those of you that have been thinking about this kind of take the plunge. Now I've waited a little while for the code to settle down. There's been lots of development. Uh, the ability to put Ardu Pilot on things like these small flight controllers has been really enabled by the use of a Chibius underlying architecture to RG Pilot. I'm not going to get into the technical detail on that, but the bottom line is it means that we can put one of the most tested, reliable GPS firmwares onto flight controllers costing 20 or 30 pounds now, rather than have to use clone Pixhooks or use Pixhook cubes, which cost the best part of a couple of hundred pounds. In this video, we're hopefully going to go through and get to the other end where all the mandatory setup is done. We can then get ready to plug it into the plane. So next video, we can complete the setup and hopefully maybe get it out to fly. A couple of things now to carry on. In the first video, we did look at how we'd installed everything and we got the firmware onto the flight controller ready for this step. I would make sure that you have all the pins connected and that you have your receiver bound to the radio and plugged in. Now on the radio, I'd recommend having the order of the channels as I'm showing here. The regular for flight controls, you don't do any mixing or anything like that on the radio, just like all the other flight controller softwares out there. And channel eight by default is for your flight modes. So set up a three position switch on that. That's gonna come in handy. I also set up another auxiliary switch on channel five for other things later on but we'll come back to that later in the series. Make sure that that's Fly all set up and then mode. the radio Manual calibration mode. will be a piece of cake. And the other thing that we'll look at is also how we're going to put everything into this AR wing. Now the cool thing is because we're using these such small flight controllers we are going to be able to squeeze RD Pilot into a plane that I normally wouldn't consider for an R2 pilot installation just because of the physical size. But everything should fit in here, but we'll come back to that before we finish the video. The only thing I had to spend a little bit of time on here was connecting the GPS and compass up. Everything that I'm talking about here is fully documented in the RD pilot manual. So you're just following along with that really. I've just had to make up the cable that goes from the BN 880 GPS unit that also has the external compass in it onto the port. I made this little diagram here with all the different colors just to make sure that I didn't make a mess of it. So you're going to connect the 5 volts and ground to each other, you're going to connect the transmit pin to receive pin for the data from the GPS and you're going to connect the I squared C connections, the serial clock and the serial data line or SCL and SDA to each other. So SCL to SCL, SDA to SDA and then that's all the connections made. So there isn't a lot of messing about to do here but we're ready for mission planner. So let's do that now. So now we have the radio set up and we have all the connections done. So we have our receiver plugged in and we have the GPS, which also includes the external compass. We can actually start the setup. So if we just flick to uh, the mission planner screen, here we are all ready to plug in and I'll show you the steps. Now the setup for this thing is exactly the same as if it was going to be a Pixhawk or any other RT pilot flight controller. There's nothing particularly different. So great news is with this board in particular I don't need to power it uh, to make all this stuff work if I just plug it into a PC it'll provide the 5 volts for both the GPS and the compass I'll just plug it in and let it boot there we go uh, the red lights flashing on the receiver I haven't turned the radio on yet but you can see here that the GPS is pulsing away it has power and then when the little red light starts flashing it's got the GPS lock so now we've done that, we can go through and go through the initial setup. So we're going to click on connect in Mission Planner, and then it should connect up to the board, get all the parameters, and we can see what's going on. Now, I'll turn on the radio to just to make sure that we're ready for that. We'll get rid of the warning for the update. So if I just go into initial setup, I wouldn't recommend running the wizard only because the wizard will assume it's an APM or Pixhawk and ask you APM and Pixhawk specific questions. And we don't want to do that. Uh, so I would just go through like I do in every other video setting up 
and Arduino Pilot software, each of the mandatory pieces. So the first is the accelerometer calibration. Uh, click on calibrate accelerometer, and then we're gonna put it into each of the positions. Now I would recommend having something that's got flat sides. Uh, this just happens to be the little uh, toolkit RC checker. You can see the video that I did on this. This is great. I've just been checking the S bus is all okay on this. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click calibrate accelerometer and then it says place vehicle level. So I'm gonna put the flight controller as level as we can and click done. Then it's gonna say place the vehicle on the left. So this is the front of this particular flight controller. So the left is like that. So we'll put it there, click done. Move the vehicle to the right. It's gonna be a little bit trickier. Uh, we probably end up doing this inside the vehicle again, but that's fine. Click done. Place it nose down. So I tend to do this outside the model just because if we do it now and it all passes, then we know if it doesn't work when it's installed, we've done something wrong. Place the vehicle nose up. This is the only challenge when you have all of the cables connected. It doesn't really work very well. You want to try and keep it perfectly still as well when you click done. Place the vehicle on its back. Uh, about there. Done. Calibration successful. So that should do that piece. GPS still hasn't got a lot, but that's not a problem. Okay, we can calibrate level, level your autopilot, uh, flatten level, click calibrate level, and that's done too. Fantastic. Next job is going to be the compass. Now, this time I would only recommend that we're using compass one. Uh, we haven't got anything else in here. It, make sure it's externally mounted. Uh, we can either do the onboard magnet calibration i'll do the live calibration i'll put a link in the description for the difference between the two onboard mag calibration slightly better but live calibration makes for a slightly nicer video so we're only going to have to move the uh gps because that again has the compass in it so we're going to try and keep it away from all the other electronics if we possibly can click on live calibration and then what we're doing is we're going to move it to try and get as many of the white dots as we possibly can. A little video game. And then when it's happy, it'll say, okay, that's good. Radio calibration. Let me just move this to the side for one second, bring the radio in. So uh, the way this works. RSSI critical, telemetry lost, telemetry. There we go, the antenna's a bit too close. Then uh, in the bottom right hand position, so that should be nose up flying to the right. Uh, both the roll and pitch are at their highest level. Make sure that the throttle goes up and down in the right direction and reverse does too. So all the controls kind of follow where they need to be with the exception of um, of the pitch, which is, seems reverse. So as you pull the stick back, it goes up. As you push the stick forward to nose down, it goes to the lowest possible value. So what we're going to do on here, uh, also just to confirm, channel 8... is the flight modes and I also have an auxiliary one on channel 52. So we're going to click on calibrate radio, ensure your transmitter is on and receiver is powered. Move all the sticks switches to that extreme position so the red bars hit the limit. So let me just do that. Okay. Loiter mode, manual mode, fly by wire A, manual mode. Fly-by-wire A, loiter mode, manual mode. There we go, that should kind of work. Ensure your sticks are centered and throttle is down. Click OK to continue. OK, that should do that bit, say OK. Servo output. Now this is one of the newer parts on the system that we'll need to set up. Now there's some great information in the wikis themselves about how you do all this stuff. Uh, but at the moment it's set for a pretty standard fixed wing aircraft. So you've got elevator, um, aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. Uh, so we don't want that. What we actually want is we want um, the motor to be on output 1. 
and outputs two and three, we want to be the different controls. Now, this is uh, something that changed recently in Mission Planner, and this becomes a really powerful sit setup for this. So, what we'll do is we'll say that this is... Find it all of there's so many choices in here now. So looking thinking about my model, that's going to be Elevon left. That is going to be the motor or throttle. Uh yeah, that's going to be throttle. So if I hit T, is that going to take me to it? Yes. So that's going to be throttle. And then this one is going to be Elevon right. Uh, we'll disable this one because we actually don't want that to do anything. Cool. So that should give me exactly where I'm going to plug everything in on the flight controller, which is good. We'll potentially come back in here, play with the maximum, minimum and trim settings as well as potentially check the reverse. But I know I'm plugging my left channel, uh, left Elevon into Servo 1. Uh, throttle ESC is going to go into servo 2, throttle right is going to go into servo 3. ESC calibration will do when it's in the plane. Flight modes, if I just move my flight mode switch, fly by wire A, loiter mode. So I can just select for each of the switch positions, I can select which model that I want. I've set in mine up for the initial flight as manual in case something horrible happens. Fly by wire A. In the middle position, fly by wire loiter A, mode. and then loiter fly mode. Fail safe, uh, we can just make sure that that all looks okay. Yeah, that'll do for now. We'll come back to that later. And the hardware ID, there's all the different pieces that I have on here. So that is the board pretty much set up with the basic stuff. Everything's working. And if I just jump into the flight data, you can see here that it's moving fine. We also have, um, if I actually rotate the compass you can see the uh, the plane rotating around as well which is good and you can also um, see that it has a GPS lock and that's pretty much where we are on the planet so the next job then is to disconnect this and then to jump onto the plane and to start installing it so let me just show you how I'm intending to put this inside the little mini AR wing so now that we know that everything on here is working, the receiver's working, the GPS is working, the compass seems to be working too, uh, let me grab the wing. So what I've done, just to prep it for installation, I've cut a box out, which is about the same size as the compass. Now the reason that that compass is going to go onto there is because that is the place on the wing that has the least magnetic interference. And the trick I use is I would invest in one of these things that you probably had if you were a, a cub or a brownie um, and it's great at telling you where there's magnetic fields when it deflects there is a bit of interference now this particular model uh, is normally full of magnets and I've taken as many of the magnets out as I possibly can uh, that way then as I move things around it's not going to get into trouble now I 3d printed these little clips that are going to be used instead of the magnets to hold everything in place um, and that has helped an awful lot. So on the underside of the wing, if I just turn it over, uh, that's where the cable is going to come through. There's a little channel for the cable out from the GPS and compass into the flight controller and that should take care of that. Um, I will have to make a little cable, again we'll do all this in the next video uh, in a lot more detail, to take the video and uh, ground from the camera and to the VTX and kind of make them onto the pins but the idea is is the flight controller I can kind of move everything around it's kind of going to fit like that and then that still gives me loads of room for the battery I can put because um, the GPS is going to be out over here and then the receiver Where's that gone? There it is. It's kind of go in here and I'll route the cables around. So that's roughly how it's all going to fit in. 
apologies for the fingers in the way. Uh, so join me in the next video where we'll do that. But before we do that, let me just show you one little trick because the last thing we need to set up that I didn't do was how you set up things like the voltage and current monitoring for the onboard voltage and current stuff that this board has, which means I can keep an eye on via the on-screen display exactly how good my battery is. So let me just jump onto that as the last thing before we finish the video. There are a couple of extra things that you need to change that are quite board specific about how the battery and current monitoring work for each of these particular flight controllers. It's detailed in the wiki for the board that you're using and because we're using the Omnibus then we're looking at setting up battery monitor equals 4, uh, battery volts pin 12, battery current pin 11, battery volt multi 11 and then we may have to play around with battery amp perv lumped uh, to make sure it's the right for the particular controller that we have now to set this up what we need to do is uh, if I just jump into mission planner here and show you the interesting thing here is that um, a lot of the options don't appear unless you enable them in mission planner so the big tip here is go into uh, config and tuning Go into Planner, and then here where it says Layout, you've got Basic and Advanced. By default, it's Basic. Make sure it's on Advanced, and then you get loads of extra things. Like, for example, when you go to Flash Firmware, that's where it allows you to get hold of um, you know, custom firmware and things like that. Um, so if you have that set and go into Initial Setup, or Config and Tuning, actually, that's where we need to be, go into Standard Parameters. Now, the first thing we need to set is the type of battery monitor. Uh, so on this one, we're going to have to set analog voltage and current. Once you've done that, then you're going to have to disconnect from the board and reboot it. And when you come back in, then once that's set up, it allows you to access everything else. If we look at the full parameter list, this um, is really cool stuff in here. All you need to do is for the bit that you're looking for over here on the right hand side, there's a search bar. So we're looking for bat underscore so there we are, bat underscore monitor is now set to four, which is what it needs to be. And if I just search for the next setting, uh, volt oops, underscore, there we go, volt pin is 12 and the volt multi is 11 and those are the ones so to change them you just kind of click on them and then you do the right parameters and that should save them so just work your way through with whatever the specifics are for the board there's only a handful of this one to change and then we're ready for the next video so i'll see you in that next one where we complete the setup inside the wing and then we might hopefully in that next video also get out for a first initial test flight too Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.